Chelsea Sherrod here with Zach Cox following the Patriots 28 to 13 loss to the Saints today. And Zach, a tough day for the Pats, a tough day for Mac Jones. We saw some struggles with ball security. Mac threw a few interceptions. What did you see from this offense today that needs to be worked on? Uh, yeah, certainly the, the, the shakiest performance, I'd say, so far for Mac Jones. Uh, had some good moments, led some nice drives, uh, but as you mentioned, did have the three interceptions, even though I would say one of them certainly wasn't his fault, bounced off of Johnny Smith's hands, but Patriots went three and out in their first three drives, and he had to throw the ball 50 times. The Patriots, with the way that this team is built, they don't want Mac Jones throwing the ball 50 times in, in any game. It, this really, the whole structure of this game was not built for for this Patriots team and this Patriots quarterback at this point in his career. I did see some good moments for Mac Jones, especially in the second half once the Patriots were able to protect him a little bit better. But uh, yeah, certainly the uh, the most uneven performance from the rookie, I would say, so far. Absolutely. One thing that Mac Jones isn't shy from, though, is taking accountability. What did you hear from him post-game when he kind of talked about taking responsibility of today's game and some of their mishaps? Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't think that's a, a problem w with him at all, mm -hmm. based on both talking to him and talking to his teammates, even talking to some of the Patriots receivers like Kendrick Bourne and Jacoby Myers after this game. They said even in that final Patriots drive when it was pretty clear that the, the game was basically over, that was essentially garbage time at that point, Mac Jones was still in the huddle trying to hype everybody up, trying to get everybody ready. So uh, I don't I don't think that's an issue uh, for Mac Jones, wh which is definitely a, a – a positive for, for a guy so early in his career. Definitely. That is not an issue, but one thing that was a concern today was James White going down in the mm -hmm. first half with a hip injury. How did that impact the momentum of the Patriots, and how could that impact them going forward? Yeah, it was a huge loss, a, a gigantic loss, because James White coming into this game led the Patriots in catches, led the Patriots in receiving yards through the first two weeks, and really was a, an important kind of security blanket, sounding board, whatever term you want to use, because Mac Jones was saying last week, even sometimes he'd look to James White in the huddle and say, James, what, what exactly is going to happen on this play? Just because James White knows the offense so well, you lose him, you obviously lose that veteran leadership, and you just you lose what he brings from an on-field production standpoint. Uh, the Patriots basically inserted Brandon Bolden into James White's role after White got hurt, but Brandon Bolden wasn't targeted in the passing game until very late in the fourth quarter. So you basically lost that entire aspect of the Patriots offense, Patriots passing game. Uh, you saw some saw, saw some receivers like Bourne and Myers pick up some of the slack, but when you don't have a guy like James White in there, that was a, a gigantic loss for the Patriots today. Definitely. Uh, let's talk about this defense. Um, some highs and lows from them, more highs than the offense. But let's talk about Matt Judon. Two and a half sacks for him today. He was you know, dealing with a knee injury throughout the week. What did you see from him, and what did you see from this defense today that you liked? Yeah, productive game from, from Matt Judon. He, he One of his two and a half sacks um, forced a punt deep in Saints territory uh, that set up the Patriots' last touchdown that kind of got them back into the game. It was a one-score a, a one game, rather. Um, during the fourth quarter, the Patriots did have uh, a chance to, to win this game, even though they were pretty severely outplayed for most of the game. But the defense just... They, they weren't able to finish, and that was an issue in week one as well. You saw them make several stops in the second half, really strong play against Jameis Winston and Alvin Kamara and this Saints offense. But when they get the ball back, down one score, needing one more stop to give the ball back to Mac Jones, they just couldn't get it. The Saints drove right down the field, scored in a Taysom Hill touchdown that basically put this game away. So definitely some positive moments from this defense, but they haven't looked – dominant in those key moments mm -hmm. and that's what the Patriots are going to need especially when they have a rookie quarterback they have some issues on offense they're going to need the defense to pick up that slack and they haven't been able to in those key moments in these two losses yes and speaking of picking up the slack how do they bounce back from this loss they've got the Buccaneers coming in next week how do they turn the page going forward yeah it's going to be difficult I mean week one loss you lose by a point to the Miami Dolphins you say hey at least we got the Jets coming next week it's a, that's a get right game that's a game against a clearly inferior opponent you can kind of get get out, work out some of the kinks, and, and get on back to the winning track. You're, you're facing the defending Super Bowl champion next week, who's undefeated at this point. Uh, we haven't seen what they're going to do today against the Rams yet, but you got Tom Brady. You just got an absolutely stacked roster in that Tampa Bay game. It's going to be tough. It's yeah. The Patriots are going to be underdogs at home, certainly, yeah. in that game. And if they lose that, they drop down to one and three. And I mean, you got the expanded playoffs this year. You got the longer season, so it's they, they got a little bit more more time to, to work things out. But yep. starting the season one and three, uh, a difficult hole to climb out of, especially with a rookie quarterback. Absolutely, they have a big one ahead in Week Four as the Buccaneers come to New England as Tom Brady returns to Gillette Stadium. So stay locked in with Nesson.com for all of your Patriots coverage leading in to that Week Four matchup.